In this video, we're going to take the time to review a couple of basic data structures, the array and the array list. Now we'll use these data structures to store objects of type runner or swimmer, and so we'll see those in a little bit of detail as we continue the program here in a moment. Go ahead and get basic data structures loaded up into your Eclipse IDE if you'd like to work along with me. We'll see once again in the basic data structures project, we'll have four classes, a runner, a swimmer, utilities, and then our driver basic data structures. As before, the runner has a race ID and a name, and we have just the default constructor, getters and setters or mutators and accessors for race ID and name, perform sport will return a string saying running, and the two string, which reports the name, the race ID, and the fact that the runner is running. Swimmer again is the same with race ID and name. It does have the explicit constructor to take in properties and set them on instantiation. We have the mutators and accessors for race ID and name, just as before. Performing the sport will say swimming, and the two-string, which reports the name, race ID, and the fact that the swimmer is swimming. Utilities, again, has just the one method, null safe equals, returning a ternary operator to tell us if two objects are equal to each other without worrying about null. And finally, in our basic data structures driver, we can get a chance to look at arrays and array lists. When we work with arrays, of course, we need to instantiate them with a defined size. What we'll do is use a final int, max race runners is equal to 5. That way we'll max out the number of runners that we can store in our runner array to be five. And if we try to create a sixth one, it should tell us that it's full. And then we have a current count. The length of the array being five doesn't mean we actually have five actual runners in place. So we need to know exactly how many we have so we can know if we're full or not. And then we'll create an array list of type swimmer, which we'll call race swimmers. And we can store any number of swimmers into the array list. The advantage of the array list is, of course, the fact that it resizes as we go and we don't have to worry about a maximum size. So here we'll set our while loop just like we did before, where we had the run race manager is equal to true. So we can have any number of runners or swimmers being entered from zero to n. Here we'll have at least one. We'll print out the menu, and then we'll do different checks in the switch to see if the user gave us a runner. Then we'll check to make sure we're not full. If so, we'll add it in, and then we'll increment the count so that we'll know next time if we're full. Again, race swimmers.add will give us the add method on the array list which gives us the ability to add a new swimmer into that swimmer array. And then finally, when we're done, we'll use a couple of for loops to iterate both of the data structures. The first one being the array, which will iterate to race runners count. And the second one will be the swimmers, which will iterate to the size of the swimmers. Again, print menu just gives us the options to add new runner, new swimmer, or quit. The runner gets new runner details. The swimmer gets new swimmer details and returns the value. So let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see our array and array list in action. Let's go ahead and add a runner. Tom, we can just use whatever numbers. Let's add another runner, Sally, and we can use whatever numbers. And then let's add a swimmer, Mike, and another swimmer, Tina. And again, we're not doing any checks on numbers, so I'm just hitting a bunch of numbers to save time. Let's go ahead and fill up our runner array to make sure it maxes out. And I gave him the runner ID and race ID and name at the same. Here's our fourth runner. Let's put Mike as a runner as well. And one more runner to fill this up. Let's do Paul. And let's try to add another runner. And it says, the race is full. No more runners can be added. So we do have that in place as expected. And again, we could go on adding swimmers if we wanted to. And ultimately then, let's go ahead and quit and watch our race participants be printed out for us using the for loops. There we see our five runners. And again, I had one where I entered the ID first. So it had the same ID and name. And then we had our swimmers, Mike, Tina, and Rita. So we see our athletes that were placed into both of those different data structures were easily stored and retrieved. 